In our next video, we're going to be looking at the property of soil texture, the most important physical property of the soil. Soil texture is the relative proportion of sand, silt, and clay in the soil sample, and it controls many of the physical properties, such as drainage or erosion resistance, that are essential for proper soil management. The three soil separates, sand, silt, and clay, have very different feels when we use our hands. So a sand, for example, is obviously gritty, a grittiness. Silk, uh, or silt, is very smooth or silky. Whereas clay has electrically charged surfaces and is very sticky when moist. So the three materials feel very differently in their pure form, but in soils, what we get are combinations of sand, silt, and clay. So a combination of 33% of each, we would call a loam. When we're in the field, we use what's called a textural triangle, which has 13 different particle size classes in it, or textural classes. And in the field, we use our hands to place the soil sample into one of those 13 classes. We do this using three different tests, the ball test, the ribbon test, and the field test. Some people as well, instead of a ribbon test, use a wire test, but we're going to use the ribbon test today. And basically, the way to think about all of these is that clay gives stickiness to a sample. So the higher the sample is in clay, the stickier it is and the more cohesive it is. So a sample which is 100% sand will have no cohesion and will fall apart very easily. So that's really what underlies a lot of the tests we're going to be looking at today. Now the first test is the ball test. And what I've done is taken a sample from each of our three horizons, the A, B, and C, and put them up here, and I'll be accessing them for the test. So I'll begin with the C horizon. Again, remember lots of calcium carbon in it, that lighter color. I break the sample up into smaller parts, and then I add moisture to it. I don't want to saturate it, but I want to make it to see if I can form a ball. So I manipulate it, I add sufficient water. If I've added too much water, I can add some dry soil to it. Okay, and I'm trying to see if it forms a ball. And indeed, it forms a very cohesive ball in my hand. If it didn't form a ball, it would tell me that it's very high in sand, a loamy sand or a pure sand. So our first test eliminates the very high sand soils from the other soils. The next test I do is the ribbon test. And in the ribbon test, what does I do is I use that ball and I try to extrude it between my thumb and my forefinger. And what I'm doing is squeezing it out or extruding it until the point that it breaks. And when it breaks, I take it and I measure it against the ruler. So that ribbon was about four centimeters long. And I'll do it again just to see if I get a similar result. I need to make sure it stays at the right moisture. So I extrude it once more between my thumb and my forefinger. And again, I'll compare that to my ruler. And that one was about three centimeters. So when I look at my ribbon test, there are three categories of length. Less than 2.5 centimeters, 2.5 to 5, or greater than 5 centimeters. So this falls into the 2.5 to 5 centimeter length. And I'm, go to, I'm going to, I've narrowed it down then to sandy clay loam, silty clay loam, or clay loam. And now I need to determine which of those three final classes it is. And I do that using what's called the field test. So I place a small amount in the middle of my hand and I saturate it. I rub my finger on it and I'm trying to determine the dominant feel to this. So the questions are, is it very gritty? Is it very smooth? Or is it neither smooth or gritty? And when I feel this, it has a considerable amount of grit or sand in it, so I'm going to say that it's a very gritty material. So when I go to the section of the handbook 
for the feel test, this, uh, this soil feels very gritty and it classifies out as a sandy clay loam. So I'm going to repeat that now for my other samples. You don't want to wear your good clothing out in the field when you're doing soils research. So now I'm taking a sample of that B horizon. I break it up. Again, I want to remove any stones from it. So I break up that horizon, removing any stones. I add my moisture to do the ball test again. And again, the soil's forming a very nice ball, so it's not a loamy sand or a sand. I'm going to take it and try to extrude out my sample. So it's a longer ribbon this time. It's breaking about now. When I measure the length, it's about six centimeters long. So I'll do that again just to confirm that measurement. And it's very important we have the right amount of soil so we don't run out of soil when we're extruding it. So I'm extruding it again. Nice long ribbon. Okay, just broke off. Measuring it, again, about six centimeters. So I'm now in a category of five centimeters or above. And that takes me to the column that includes sandy clay, silty clay, and clay. So I want to clean off the middle of my hand, put a small amount in there for the field test, saturate it, and feel, remember I'm feeling for, is it gritty, is it smooth, or is it neither gritty or smooth? And once again, I'm feeling lots of grit in here. So I'm going to say it's very gritty, and that would be a sandy clay. So we'll turn then to our final horizon, the A horizon. The A horizon has lots of roots in it, and we need to make sure we pull those roots out before we start. We break up the little aggregates or the peds. We add our moisture. And we work it till we've got it at about the right moisture content. Right about here. And now we can do our ball test. Once again, a lovely ball associated with it. Have a fragment of an earthworm there. And now we'll try the ribbon test. So again, I'm extruding it between the thumb and the forefinger till the point that it breaks. And then I'm measuring that piece. So that piece was three centimeters. And I'll try it again. And if I found there was a big difference between the two, then I would do it a number of times to make sure I'm getting a good average value. So again, I extrude it breaks. Here's my piece. I measure it. It's about four centimeters. So I'm in that category of 2.5 to 5 centimeters, sandy clay loam, silty clay loam, or clay loam. I take it for the final field test. I clean the legacy of the last test out of my palm, put it in the middle, add the water, Okay, and for this one, I don't detect the same amount of grit as I did in the other one. In fact, it's a very smooth feeling material, and that puts it in the category of a silty clay loam. It's unsurprising that all three samples were in the loam category. The parent material for this soil is what we call glacial till, and it's directly deposited by the ice sheets. The ice sheet's effectively a large bulldozer 
mixes together gravel, sand, silt, and clay and gives us this characteristic glacial till parent material. The last thing we'll look at is the percentage of coarse fragments. So anything larger than two millimeters in diameter we consider to be a coarse fragment, or gravel more simply. And what we want to do is try to get a sense of what is the percentage of coarse fragments in this profile. And what we use for that is a chart called the area covered chart. They are charts that simply give us a white space with different black objects in it which occupy in this 2% of the white space of that chart. This chart is 20% coverage by the black spaces. And we use this to try to calibrate our estimation of coarse fragments or of other features in the soil. So by coarse fragments you can see the larger gravel pieces associated with this. And for where I'm sitting there are small gravel entities as well. But the percentage of them is relatively low. So if I compare it to my area covered chart it would almost certainly fall into this 2% or slightly more chart. So I would say that for the sea horizon there's 2 to 5% coarse fragments. The B horizon 2 to 5% coarse fragments. But I can't actually see any coarse fragments in the upper A horizon. Those two big stones over there I took from the bottom and took up there. So our A horizon seems to be relatively stone free so I would say it has 0% coarse fragments. Between our coarse fragments and our soil texture we have then described the key physical properties of the soil for many management processes.